What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3. Still on the second asteroid and still waiting for Bandy just to finish off the last few bits to build. That's the last cable there, just finished yet, yeah, and just there I saw the uh, teleporter belt loader is now running. So that means we're getting that polluted oxygen, sorry, polluted mud and the mud over to the main base. Now I'm trying to hold that door open because it's not actually doing anything. It is sealed. But it's already open by the tiles anyway, so. We want to make sure that the polluted oxygen and clean oxygen can sort themselves out so that the base is only clean oxygen and clean up that liquid there so that we don't get soggy feet or wet feet or whatever it says every time they walk in it, which is a debuff in itself. Separate to that, we now have power. As you can see, the batteries are charging. Now, there isn't enough power to run the whole base permanently, not even close, but there's some power. So at night time, the plug slugs will charge the battery and at the time throughout the entire night, everything that's powered will work. And then as you can see, the batteries will drain throughout the day. We are past dinner time actually, and they are still, so I'd say what percentage that is, probably 10, 15%. So it looks like we can get about 60% of the way through the day. Uh, there are a couple of plug slugs, funnily enough, trapped under there that I've built the floor. So they're going to be a bit, of a bit of a nightmare to get out of there because they like crawling into them ridiculous spaces. But I could just build a block in and push them out slowly over time. It's not a problem. Back home, I have decided on my central storage system and also the central wallpaper. You can see I'm putting in there, which is a yellow colour. And it is actually, uh, I think it's tungsten that I'm using. So what I've done is gone all the way up the center. And basically, to make it easier, I have broken all of the storage vessels and broken the floor. So everything fell to the bottom. This is the new storage room that you saw there. It has four of the sweepers in it to make sure plenty of resources are moved. The eggs are automated. Anything that's liquefactable is automated. Of course, we still have... Yeah, that, that plumbing makes no sense. If I just go straight into that white thing there, because it's only ever going to be carbon dioxide, I don't have to put it through the main pipeline there, which means that it will work better. There's a lot of gas coming from everywhere, and I am looking for a solution as to how to do that a bit quicker. I'm just wondering whether if I put the filters in a loop, I can actually... Well, no, because it's still one pipe. I need to try and get the, the the gases coming in. You can see they're coming in on two lines there. I need that to go straight into the filter system without having to go into one pipe because it's slowing everything down. There's so much gas to grab this this almighty almighty asteroid. But yeah, so you can see there that everything's being sorted automatically. These containers hold what I want them to hold, which is basically everything other than uh, what is it? Foodstuffs, eggs and liquefactables along with anything that off gases everything else should be stored there um, and there is a cooling loop through there already to stop the storage from overheating but down at the bottom as you can see we are we are a good way we are nearly finished there's this cold biome and then that hot biome to the left of it the rest of it's already dug out What's worrying though is along the bottom there is a huge amount of resources that need to be collected. And there is no way I am going to do a mass sweep session where I do a time lapse because it's just too much. It works on the smaller asteroids but not one the size of this. So I need to automate that and to automate it I'll use the sweepers. But there is a secret weapon that I'm going to put in between... I'm hoping it's going to work anyway, in order to make it that we're not just chucking 900 degree items into the base unknowingly. First thing I need to, of course, is get a floor built, but everybody's pretty busy. That right hand side there as well, I need to get that liquid dropped in, just to, either to the bottom or get a pump sucking it up. Because at the minute it's just sat there for no reason whatsoever, which seems... Pointless. 
So here we go, a giant wall of sweepers. Before I forget to mention, if you haven't already, please remember to subscribe to make sure you don't miss anything in the future. And in the future, that means this. So what I'm going to do is put in a sweeper, then measure out at the distance of a sweeper, and then put in another sweeper. The idea is that I've got sweepers going across the entirety of the floor, so that the whole floor is covered by a sweeper. Then, using a few conveyor belt loaders and a few conveyor belts, rails, conveyor rails, anyway, rails, uh, we can get all of them goods automatically sent to our base without the duplicates having to do anything. Simple bit of math to measure out where and when I can build them. The minimum is the best thing to do obviously i've already as you saw put the cable in the power cables to try and get these things powered um and then i'll obviously need less conveyor belt loaders because one will suffice at least two of the sweepers in theory then the goods will be sent up into a room which is basically where this floor is they will drop into said room and i'm going to try and run a cooling system around there will be a sweeper in this room that then picks up the goods once more, but only if they are 30 degrees or colder. Anything warmer than that will have to wait to be cooled down. They then get sent into the base. So the secret weapon is a coolant room that allows all of the solid items to get cooled. Meanwhile, we've got yet another person trapped. I honestly think that this mod that makes him smarter hates me. Similar to the uh, YouTube algorithm, it seems. But anyway. So, just making it that Ben, he doesn't die. Because we, we obviously don't want them uh, to stop working. Nor die. That's terrible. Oh, that yeah, ran fast then. I wish I was running too. Oh, she's having a tantrum. That's fine. Yeah, stress level is at 100%. Expected. She is working very, very hard. And... Yeah, morale-wise, it's not covering that. However, after she's finished having the tantrum, she will feel better, so that's good. There is a massage table in there. And as you can see, I have a specially developed schedule for the people on this asteroid, the duplicants. I am not going to do what it is there, which means they don't do anything. What they are going to do is eight hours of work a day, and then the rest of it is downtime. So they'll still get stuff done, but they'll be a lot better off than the guys back at home. Okay, so there's sort of the basics. A sealed room with the generators in to take the heat away. Uh, a room then below where the goods will be dropped. There will be a liquid loop, obviously taking the heat away and running into that room. You can see that yellow is now coming on. It's like a mustard, right? It's a mustard colour, I think. It is tungsten. We have about 24 tons of tungsten, so I'm not worried about that. It's also uh, helping with the decor. The two pumps in the centre there are the automated getting rid of the carbon dioxide because the base is sealed. So the oxygen that's in there that's getting breathed in... When they exhale, of course, uh, they the the carbon dioxide has nowhere to go. So you can see this pump, one on the left, one on the right, and they're automated. If they get carbon dioxide, they will pump it out. If they accidentally pump out oxygen, though, that will get filtered out and put back into the system and back into the base. So we're not wasting anything, technically. Random critters out and about. I'm assuming this is to do with eggs that are getting missed because I've got probably not enough duplicates to run a base of this size i will of course add to the population as soon as i can especially now we're moving on to another planet that means i'm pretty confident that this asteroid is reasonably stable though there is still a lot of digging to do more progress on the cooling loop a crap ton of temp shift plates to make sure that because we've only got one of the what well, that's that shoot so all of the singular items will be piled up in one place at the start anyway uh, so i'm hoping that the temp shift plates help take that temperature out of the solid items i don't know that it's going to work uh, but it's science right for all of us 
Not very often you see the scolding warning on the base. You can see I have actually pulled the trigger and told everybody to ignore the Atmos suits and get stuff done. The This sweeping setup that I'm doing at the bottom and then that cooling setup, it was taking too long. So I've told everybody to ignore the suits and just crack on, hold your breath. The, what is that? The ladders, they're not needed, as you can see. They're only there in order to dig up the land. They were trying to build them ladders, but there was no ground to, un uh, to dig up, so. Just going along and making sure I've not missed anything that can be dug up. Like there, look, that's one, yeah. And the rest of it. We are very close now to clearing out the bottom. Of course, there's still a bit of a bit of a liquid to clean up as well, but that's a passive thing that's not going to be an issue at all. And it's already being done, as we know, because that's going up to that very top thing that's being turned into plastic mostly. So yeah, scolding because it's far too warm in there. The cooling loop is working though. It would be a lot warmer than that if it wasn't. Um, but it's not, of course, as efficient as probably we wanted it to be. I'll be honest though, hot oil isn't a negative, right? Now I am seeing some, what was that? Yeah, the sweeper, get a sweeper in there to pick up all of these crops because we shouldn't have people collecting them. And this is where I need to pay attention to make sure that the guys or the bio bot robot things aren't wasting their time doing jobs that can be automated. Simple things like just picking stuff up and putting it in storage or taking it to the right room At this stage is not something that someone should be doing at all um, For now, I expect most of them to be either digging Or continuing with the essential tasks That's the last sweeper to set up once that is done we should have a lot of goods coming in. Just need to get a conveyor loader that's close enough to it in order for it to reach. And then along the line as well, like I say, one in between two is more than enough. It doesn't need one in between the next one, which it looks like I'm going to do anyway because I'm, I'm obviously not paying attention at the time. No, I was paying attention. Yes, because one conveyor belt loader now that will pay off in dividends a little bit later because i am going to put multiple rails one rail is not enough to handle the amount of volume that the sweepers can pick up it's too they're too slow for um the amount of volume that can be picked up so we are going to get them wired up so they start collecting the heat that guy there is suffocating in an atmo suit because these, all of the people in their Atmo suits shouldn't be in Atmo suits because they're turned off, which is why they're suffocating. They should drop them. It's really, really silly. All you do is click on them and click, click unequipped suit is an easy fix or wait for it to actually show up on the screen that they're suffocating and then you can do it then. Either way works. Strangely, I'm a noob and forgot that I ran out of beds uh, about two duplicates ago. So, yeah, I've just thrown in an extra bedroom. And while I'm at it, I'm chucking in plenty of statues for the rooms that I do have. Any space and spare you have, you should fill with decor items, because why not? So, this is working now, as you can see. The bit to the left is an extension that I won't use, but it's planned just in case. You can see that top section is nice and cold. The liquid goes through, through all them temp shift plates, takes the heat away from them items. Them items then just wait there until they hit the right temperature. The temperature is set to 30 degrees and the sweeper in that room's job is to only pick up the stuff that it that is 30 degrees or less. By less, yes, it can pick up liquefactables, but they're not being collected, so don't worry about that. They are being left in the floor. So this uh, conveyor boat loader is then sending that into the base. It arrives, drops it in that room that you've seen already. And then one of the four sweepers in the main storage room puts them away. Simple. Now I just need to make sure that the... You can see the cap there on the bottom temperature. Negative 273 to 30. So nothing above 30 degrees will be picked up. It will just sit at the bottom on the floor down there until... Yeah, until it gets to the right temperature. 
Now, I have checked a couple of the items, and they do, and they are cooling down. There, I'm sure, is a better way of doing it, and I'm not sure what that is yet. Maybe dropping them in a liquid is quicker. I don't know. Uh, if anybody does know, please let me know. But for now, it is working. It's just slow. But it's a passive thing that I'm leaving anyway. I don't need the resources technically yet. Um, and you can see a lot of the stuff is coming in. And there is a small tick where you can see it picking up items. So clearly there are goods coming in that are below 30 degrees, which is good. The chest over to the left-hand side is a sealed chest. And that's job is to hold bleach stone. So any bleach stone that's lying around that's getting picked up will go into that chest. And as it's a sealed chest, will not off-gas. It just, even if it off-gas once or twice, you get chlorine in places I don't want it, which is why I've done that. Now I'm realising that there's just too many resources to handle on one line. So I'm going to throw in a second and eventually a third line. Um, all of which need to be, yeah, this is the third line actually, because I've already done the second there. All of them need to then go into their own chute. So at no point do they interact and that should be three times faster. More building for the team. They're very busy, that's for sure. While we wait for all of those conveyor rails to be... Well, the resources to be delivered and then built. Come over to the second asteroid again. You can see I've got them slugs up. Most of the jobs seem to have been completed. We have managed to get a second person over here now. Can't see where they are though. There's Ben Van He. Definitely says two of twenty seven, so there's two there's two duplicates over here. I just can't see. Is that Camille? Yeah, that must be him there. And I'm forcing everybody or forcing them both allegedly. This I swear to god this oh yeah, the, she's I'm not sure what she's doing, she's pulling faces. She's probably having another tantrum. Yeah, 100%, so that's why. So one of them's having a tantrum and one of them's working. And all I've done is said, send all of the cobalt ore you can over home. So that's what she is doing. Yes, it is Camille. As soon as they've got a good chunk of that over, which seems to be that much because I've turned the, the level down, that will give us a nice bit of cobalt ore to do standard stuff at home. And then now it's a case of asking them to dig out a huge proportion of this map. Firstly, I'm going to concentrate on the parts that are horizontal because it's easiest for them to dig. But also keeping an eye out for the cobalt ore, which is that blue spotty ore you can see there. And then above where I am now, that section is all cobalt as well, right above where I put that ladder. So I will, of course, dig that out as well. Just to make sure that we have a good supply of cobalt that I can send back home. Because a lot of the low-end stuff that you still need to build, like beds and things do require ores not refined metals and there isn't that many ores left on the original planet because i've converted it all so i've turned it all off now so any ores we send home will not get converted all of the refined metals we're relying on the volcanoes there's some ethanol as well i need to so what i could do with doing as well is next step would be to get all of the liquids together so I can start pumping them home as well. Now a tip I like to do, especially with the second asteroid, where they always seem to put it right in the middle and there's water everywhere. As soon as we can afford to, I'm going to change all of the walls and ceilings and floors to the mesh tile that allows liquid to fall through. Then, when you're digging above and liquid gets let loose, it just goes straight through your base and still to the bottom. Back at home, you can see two of the three chutes are in. So we have two lots now twice as much of the goodies coming in definitely quicker you can see it's definitely busier in there with the stuff being sent up into base there's a plenty of stuff there that's under 30 degrees eventually this will stop because all of the goods will be picked up and then i'll just rip it all out and get the resources back for it doesn't hurt no one and it's certainly saving all of my duplicates from spending hours and i'm i'm literal hours like real life hours Picking all this stuff up. 
Just an overview of the base looks like now on cycle 368. It's looking good, I would say. Left hand side totally cleared out and the bottom up to where we wanted, almost done as well. I'm not entirely sure how far to the right this map goes, but I don't expect it to go much further, but we will see soon. We are at time now though, so I am going to end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome as always. Subscribe for more to stay up to date. Take care. Goodbye.